Vegan fake meats are linked to increase in heart deaths. Vegan fake meats linked to heart disease, early death. These are from the Daily Mail and the New York Post, so we should already be skeptical. And they're based on this very recent study. Luckily for us, The Lancet has published this publicly, so you can read the whole thing for free. I did read it, and spoiler, no, no. So the study, the aim was to see if a connection exists between ultra processed foods, UPFs, and cardiovascular disease, or really specifically, they wanted to see if there's a connection between plant sourced or plant based UPFs and cardiovascular disease. To do this, they looked at 24 hour dietary recalls, two per person, per participant, from 118,397 people. They also looked at hospital and mortality records for incidents of cardiovascular disease, as well as death from cardiovascular disease. Every 10 percentage points increase in plant sourced non UPF consumption was associated with a 7% lower risk of CVD and a 13% lower risk of CVD mortality. And no one is surprised by that, right? Plant sourced non UPF foods, non ultra processed foods, right? So fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, whole grains, legumes. Yeah, we already know they're good for us. Conversely, plant sourced UPF consumption was associated with a 5% increased risk and a 12% higher mortality. So this is where the fake meats would go, right? They would fall into the UPF category. But you notice here, they don't say fake meat or meat alternatives. They say plant sourced UPFs. And fortunately for us, the researchers have laid out very clearly exactly what that means. Table two has everything listed by percentage of total calories, plant sourced foods on the left and animal sourced on the right. Total plant sourced UPF is 39.4% of total calories. Within that, we have these subcategories. Industrialized packaged breads makes up the largest portion, 9.9%, followed by pastries, buns, and cakes and then biscuits and that confused me at first I was like do we eat that many biscuits oh right this is the UK biscuit is like cookies right point is around 20% of that 39.4% for plant sourced UPFs comes from candy basically right like not fake meats where is the fake meat exactly we have margarine french fries candy sugary cereal soda and fruit juice chips pizza frozen meals, alcohol, sauces. Oh, here we are, the very, the very last category. Meat alternatives at 0.2% of total calories. They list a mean intake of 2,034 calories per day among the participants. So that's about four calories a day from meat alternatives. Was that like a crumb of Beyond Burger? <laughs> Seriously, they consumed more calories from alcohol, and yet we're supposed to believe the study says anything meaningful about meat alternatives. Fuck off. But let's say meat alternatives did make up a large portion of the total calories from processed foods. That still wouldn't tell us much of anything because meat alternatives includes a lot of different products. It especially wouldn't tell us anything here since they include tofu and tempeh as an ultra processed meat alternative. I've criticized the Nova classification before and that's what the study uses to put foods into the various categories to determine what is an ultra processed food. And by their description, by their rules, clearly tofu is not an ultra processed food. It should be in the processed category. So it should be with the non UPFs, but it looks like people weren't really consuming tofu at all. So again, it doesn't matter. But even if we exclude tofu and tempeh, and we're just looking at the fake meats, what people think of as fake meats, the ultra processed meats, again, they're very different. For example, let's compare the Beyond Burger to Hillary's world's best veggie burger. A Beyond Burger is mostly pea protein, canola oil, and coconut oil. Hillary's is whole grain millet, kale, and or spinach and canola oil. Oh, they both contain seed oils. Uh-oh, I just did a video on that. Check it out if you're interested. Beyond is 290 calories and 18 grams of protein per patty. Hillary's is only 160 calories and four grams of protein per patty. These products could not be more different. I mean, look at them, right? Beyond Burger looks like a burger. The Hillary's looks like a veggie burger. It looks like mashed up veggies formed into a patty, right? Like you can see the spinach in there. And yet they would both be in this meat alternatives category. Beyond actually has a new burger made with avocado oil instead of coconut oil, so much less saturated fat, much healthier. They would both be included in meat alternatives. And finally, we can see here that this data was collected between 2011 
and 2012, many of the meat alternatives we see today, including Beyond Burger and Impossible Burger, did not exist. Now, the New York Post article does mention, well below the fold, of course, that half of the ultra-processed foods were breads and pastries, but they don't say anything about how much meat alternatives these people were eating. Gee, I wonder why. Daily Mail actually does say, they include a quote that says, meat alternatives make up a small amount. Again, well below the fold. Many foods that do not contain animal products, which includes biscuits, crisps, confectionery, and soft drinks, are technically plant-based, but would not be considered essential as part of a healthy diet by the majority of people. Yet they still chose to put fake meat in the headline. Cool. And what about the animal-sourced ultra-processed foods? Yeah, not great. What about the animal-sourced non-ultra-processed foods? Not great. Replacing 10% of ultra-processed animal foods or non-ultra-processed animal foods with healthy plant foods reduce the risk for CVD and coronary heart disease. The same for death from CVD and coronary heart disease, although the results were non-significant for animal ultra-processed foods. So there was a connection with the non-ultra-processed, I'm guessing because red meat. These results support the notion to improve CVD health outcomes with a shift towards plant-sourced food choices that consider the degree of food processing. In other words, this study is telling us what so many studies have told us before, a diet that focuses on whole grains, legumes, fresh fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, is the healthiest. Unprocessed or minimally processed meats may be healthier than the ultra-processed meats, excluding red meat, but when compared to plants, they're clearly the less healthy choice. And I should mention, the non-ultra-processed plant foods category in this study doesn't just include whole plant foods. We've got table sugar, white pasta, white rice, beer and wine. In fact, beer and wine is the second most consumed subcategory over 100 calories per day. Even with all of these not-so-healthy foods, animal foods are worse. And I'm vegan, so of course this is the part where I say the New York Post Daily Mail, they're shilling for the meat industry. Yes, it is true that animal agriculture lobbyists, they love this sort of thing. Anything that makes consumers think twice about buying less meat. But the truth is, a lot of people want to see vegan meat fail and not for financial reasons. Maybe they think it's unnatural and gross. Maybe it makes them feel bad about their own dietary choices, right? And if, oh, if the fake meat's bad too, okay, cool. I don't have to do anything. New York Post, Daily Mail, they chose these headlines because likely they get far more clicks than plant-based is good, sorry. We want to hear good things about our bad habits or bad things about potential good habits so we don't have to actually adopt those habits. The meat industry doesn't really need to pay people to show for them. People will do it all on their own. Now, the New York Times did change it to vegan processed foods instead of vegan fake meats, which is better. I mean, you can still argue that people assume when you say vegan process that you're talking about the fake meats, the fake cheeses. Oh, and shout out to The Conversation. Are plant-based burgers really bad for your heart? Here's what's behind the scary headlines by Evangeline Mancioris. This is a much more balanced take. They criticize the Daily Mail and the New York Post, and they even mentioned the 0.2% for mock meats. It's hard to say why the media focused on fake meat, but there is one clue in the media release issued to promote the research. Although the media release did not mention the words fake meat, an image of plant-based burgers, sausages, and meatballs featured prominently. The introduction of the study itself also mentions plant-sourced ultra-processed foods such as sausages, nuggets, and burgers, so it's no wonder people can be confused. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to know your thoughts on this study and the headlines down below. Please like and subscribe. And thank you so much to my members and my patrons at patreon.com slash unnatural vegan. I do two exclusive videos per month for tier two members and patrons. I do a vlog and then a controversial video, just whatever I want to talk about that doesn't really fit for the channel. And I've been doing those since the beginning of last year. So I should have wait 17 now wow i have a little playlist or what do they call it on patreon a collection i guess of all the controversials so you can easily find them anyway thanks again guys new video soon what would be the opposite clickbait title even sugar is better than me <laughs> eat a fruit beer and white rice diet for heart health